the core wound probably for everybody is abandonment. In other words, if we are these eternal beings uh, and we came from stardust, uh, we've essentially come in forgetting our eternal nature and forgetting our purpose and where we came from and what is what we're here to do and we had to come from somewhere and the best we can do as we move through the world is we're like oh okay well we were dropped here without any guidebook without any guidance and nobody knows i don't haven't found a human yet that knows how what's really going on within the mystery and so the real core abandonment is on some projection to a god figure whatever that looks like for you that we were abandoned by god here we are in the temporal world left to suffer most of the time and with no guarantee of uh if everything's going to be okay like that's like there's core wound for almost everybody is wrapped around in that and then that core wound end up, ends up getting replicated by some person that's important in our lives i think it's tricky when that abandonment happens uh with our primary caregivers very difficult uh, to navigate that because your core wound is then reinforced by your closest link to life in your formative years um, but nobody goes through life without experiencing some form of that abandonment. And I think eventually we get to that place where uh, we have to wrestle with it. We have to wrestle with our version of it. And it's, it's tied to our fear of death. It's tied to our fear of life. It's tied to kind of everything. Um, but liberation lives inside that very vulnerable space where we feel like we are uh, utterly alone. Right, David White calls it the single malt essence of your adult aloneness. <laughs> you know, it's like it's it's potent stuff, and uh, it can be inebriating. Um, but if you study it, there's there's beauty in that single malt essence also, and like the beautiful fractals we see, uh, the part exists within the whole, and the whole ex exists within the part. And in the exploration, you recognize that it's always been that way and it's probably always going to be that way. And there's never been a moment in your life where you've been alone. Like you're, you're smack dab in the middle of it and you couldn't extract yourself from it if you tried. Um, and the dance ends up becoming, stopping in our attempts to look for it, to look a certain way. Because the wound wants it to look a certain way. And the wound says, I can't heal until I get it the way I want it. Um, and that keeps us in this perpetual cycle of woundedness. And eventually we've got to throw off the, the, the blinders of the wound and see the larger forms of connection that exist with, within and around us. And that eventually becomes more potent. The, the wound can wake up within that more expansive vision. It can't wake up when it, within itself. It can't wake up within its provincial view because it just keeps getting reinforced. And so as we learn to keep expanding our view, we're doing that in a natural landscape because it's beautiful, but that's still just the practice, right? There is... The whole of you ends up doing that. Like the, the inner part of you that's the soul or whatever you want to call it ends up stretching itself out uh, in the same way that we're guiding our minds to pay attention in the landscape. There is a parallel version of that that takes place within the inner landscape where the soul starts to step into the forefront of our awareness and it stretches itself out. And when that happens, the light's bright enough on the inside for all of these parts of ourselves that have been perpetually looping in shadow to be exposed to see themselves, to recognize themselves, and then to, to move toward the light, right? <laughs> move toward awareness, move toward uh, the embrace, because the generator of light in that space is you, right? Is this, you've stepped into the place of your own illumination, right? Um, and if we talk about it too much, it ends up becoming a hindrance to finding it, but um, it is there, it does exist, and I think we move into it in a two steps forward, one step back kind of a pace. 
It's the rabbit dance, you know? Um, and so we, we remember it in part and then we forget it. And then we remember a couple more parts and then we forget a part. <laughs> Eventually we've covered enough ground so that the largest portion of our identity is, is actually residing there. And the more of you that resides there, the greater your capacity to integrate the parts of you that are longing to return. And I think that's the, the journey, you know. And as we cultivate our own versions of self-love, we also, and you know, mercy and forgiveness and gentleness around our, our inability to get this at times, our love gets big enough to actually embrace those parts of us that um, feel the lack and feel the loss and feel the abandonment those parts of us step into the, the embrace that we've actually been looking for this whole time. I think the embrace that this interesting journey through the temporal world is designed to catalyze, right? It's, it's this really strange dance where uh, we're put into a paradox. We're put into a problem that has no resolution through the intellect, but is not requiring a resolution from the perspective of the soul. And I think that that, as we move through that conflict, we eventually settle into that place, that part of us that understands that. And we let, we have the courage to surrender into it, 